Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Eugen and today I will be having some fun with a pen that has been in my collection for a couple of years. The Click Fountain Pen from India made out of Ebonite. I have purchased the pen a long time ago from eBay. To be honest, I don't even remember how long ago or even how much I paid back then. But uh, having a quick look at some ebay auctions you can still find this pen for around 70 canadian dollars plus an additional 20 canadian dollars for shipping fees a little bit on the expensive side of things maybe i'll let you decide uh, that based on what you will see in this uh, review going straight into the fountain pen as i mentioned the pen is made out of ebonite uh, the color that I chose is this uh, black and green swirly pop pattern and it has a few brown uh, spots here and there, especially towards the end of the pen. My pen also had a little bit of defect, something that doesn't really bother me, but to keep in mind that you might have this kind of stuff on uh, your Ebonite if you're ordering one of these pens. The pen is very simple as you can see, um, has a classic uh, cigar I guess shape and uh, my pen came with uh, silver trims uh, just on the cap, the body doesn't have any trims at all. As an odd thing, uh, the cap, uh, the top finial it's uh, I guess metal and the clip seems to be incorporated with the um, the cap and unfortunately based on what I see it looks like this finial and the clip are glued on top of the cap. I'm not sure how ideal that is. Um, I think if you by any chance bend or uh, break that clip you're kind of out of luck. The cap has a little bit of a bulge uh, at the middle. It ends with uh, a band and then continues a little bit with uh, the cap that tapers down and has a little bit of an edge. The clip is actually fairly usable but maybe on the stiffer side of things I wouldn't recommend to push it too hard because again you do not want to break that since I don't think you could just replace it anymore since my assumption is that this is glued on. Now I changed my uh, cloth so doing a quick cloth test to see how it works. This material it's a little bit thicker than what I had uh, before and the material seems to slide in very nicely on the clip and uh, when you remove it nothing seems to be snagging. The cap it's a twist uh, cap. I can remove it uh, in one move doing this so the cap it's under two rotations uh, for sure which is not bad. And once you remove the cap, you will be greeted with a very interesting uh, nib and a very simple section. I say interesting nib because there's a love and hate relationship between me and these type of nibs that I will explain shortly. Going back to the cap, it's hard to see in this light, but uh, I use my endoscope. Hopefully I uh, got some good footage out of it and you can see the inside of the cap. There is absolutely no inner liner and when you get reached to the end of the cap it's pretty much uh, basically um, there's no hole in there. It's uh, enclosed and that's what makes me think that the top finial and the clip are just glued on top of the, on the cap. Going back to the nib, uh, this is uh, I guess what you would call a semi-flex to a flex uh, Indian nib or I believe that's how they call I don't know the actual uh, scientific name for this type of nibs um, but the idea is they have a very long slit and that allows the tines to spread apart very easily. Now the problem that I find with these nibs is that when they um, and they spread in order to get the actual uh, proper flex out of them. Because of that long slit, uh, it allows the nib to actually travel a little bit further 
from the feed than it should. So this type of nibs, you will never be able to use them at their full uh, flex capacity because um, they will eventually run out of uh, ink and they will have ink starvation. And it doesn't matter what, what feed you are using, you will still run into that issue because the nib travels too far from, from the feed. So the nib and the feed on this pen are a number six nib and feed. It comes with a generic feed, but uh, from what I remember, I already modified this feed for flow. So I wad I've widened the channels for ink flow, for a better ink flow uh, on top, uh, the part that is going inside the section, and at the same time, the nipple that actually goes inside the converter. All those have been modified in the past by me for a better ink flow. Going away from the nib, the section is fairly short and uh, very simple. It flares out a little bit towards the nib. However, uh, the way the barrel and the section meet, it's uh, not intrusive. So you can actually use the, the barrel as part of the section. And uh, those uh, threads are not bad. They're not sharp and they actually help with giving you more grip on the pen. Removing the barrel. On this pen, I already have installed a converter. It does take uh, international size converters. However, because of the barrel design, you can't use any international converter. The only converter that I was able to use is this one. If you have uh, the metal band that it's a little bit wider, it will jam itself into the barrel and you won't be able to close down the, um, the barrel all the way. It will be somewhere in here or in here, depending on the converter you have. And if it's too long and it sits a little bit higher, then again, uh, it will close down only about yay much. So in other words, yes, you can use a uh, international converter, but you are limited on the size you can use. This is the only international converter that I was able to use in this pen. However, if you don't care about that, you can use the uh, long international uh, cartridges. They fit very well. I remember when I bought the pen, it came with two of these. So you will have um, some options in there. And if that is not enough for you, again, as you can see from the video that I've done with the endoscope, again, not the best quality, but hopefully you get the idea. The barrel is uh, basically enclosed and uh, airtight or liquid tight. And using a generous amount of silicone grease on the threads, you could most probably convert this uh, pen into an eyedropper if you prefer that. And uh, well, then your ink capacity has increased by quite a lot. The balance of the pen is actually pretty good. Uh, unposted, it's in the middle of the pen. The pen does post. At least the, the copy that I have posts very nice and secure. It doesn't go deep, it's more towards the top. And the balance does shift a little bit towards the top of the pen because of the metal trims. However, in hand, especially if you hold it a little bit higher, it's not unpleasant at all. It's not that heavy. Even if you hold it here, yes, you fight a little bit with the, the top of the pen, but again, I don't find it that uncomfortable. And this, this is ideal. And this is even better, especially if you do loose uh, sketchings. I think this is, this is perfect. Now, one thing to note is that these uh, are basically ebonite that it's turned. So the design of the pen might be slightly different from pen to pen. And maybe some pens will post deeper. Chances are some post not as good. However, based on the copy that I have, it's not bad. I would say it's okay. For today's drawing, I was planning to use uh, some purple inks and I had two choices, either the Diamine Imperial Purple 
or the Yamabudo Yoroshizuku. I've never used this one so far, so I think I'm gonna go with this one. Inking process is very simple, remove cap, remove barrel, and if you plan to eye drop, well, put silicone grease on these threads, fill up uh, your barrel with ink all the way where the threads are uh, starting, and then you're done. Fun fact, it looks like this converter doesn't work either, even though the fitment seems to be okay, somehow ink uh, doesn't uh, stay in the converter, there seems to be some sort of an air gap, and as such the nib keeps on dripping. So back up plan, we'll put the converter away and we'll, I'll be using one of these empty cartridges that I had lying around. This one seems to be a much tighter fit and it will work just fine for this pen. So inking process has changed, as such we'll be using a syringe and the process is very simple. Fill up your syringe, put it inside your cartridge and do this until it's full. Put your cartridge into the pen, shake it a little bit, put it aside and then wait until you get ink in the nib. Going to do a quick rating sample. This nib is uh, really wet right now and uh, writes wider than I would like it to be. So we'll see what's going to happen with the drawing. So this is... Click. On the pen. From India. Nib is very wet. Again, keep in mind that I did modify this feed for ink flow so I can actually flex the knee properly. And speaking of flex, I'm not sure how well this paper will take the flex, but I would say that's not too bad. And now it's reload. However, it recovers very fast. Yeah, this uh, paper not very suited for this type of writing. Now the nib is not bad, especially if you like a nib that it's a little bit wet and a little bit uh, more on the medium to bold side or to broad side. It's definitely not a fine line. However, it, the reverse does work. So I have a feeling I'll be using the reverse a lot in my drawing. It's a little bit scratchy, a little bit chatty, but there's no issue with the reverse. And I guess if you like flexing, especially after you modify the fit a little bit, you can definitely get some nice flex. Now, I'm not a flexor by any means, but I like having fun with it. As mentioned for today's drawing, I was planning to do a mushroom or a fungi, whatever you want to call it. Um, I already did a quick sketch of whatever I want to do. I found this image on Google searches. I liked the way the mushroom was looking like, uh, the way it was twisted, um, and well, the way the hat it was tilted, that you could see basically underneath, and uh, it was sort of a backlitted. So uh, the veins were standing out quite nicely. Not sure if I'm going to darken the background. 
I might, I might not. I guess we'll see that together. Anyway, I'll uh, get into the drawing and I'll let you know what I think of this fountain pen. And you can decide if you like it and if it's something that it will be good for you or not. Fair warning, I uh, think I might have screwed up the drawing uh, a little bit at the end. I'm not 100% sure, still deciding if it's screwed up or, uh, or just abstract. I like how the mushroom end up and uh, how the shading turn out. I'm just not 100% sure about what I did around it. I do like the abstract brush strokes that I end up with though. I guess um, that is what you get when you experiment with things. A lot of uncertainty. Oh, and I like this uh, Hiroshizuku ink as well. Uh, it's not as great as the Winter Shogun, I think, but pretty neat. It shades really interesting. An interesting purple red with accents on uh, red, not purple. Going back to the fountain pen, uh, it performed great. Ignoring the converter mishap, which I don't blame it on the pen, everything worked as it should have without skipping a bit, and somehow, even though it's not uh, really a fine line since the nip is so wet, I was able to get some really nice fine lines out of it. Things that I like about the click from the pen, I like the ebonite pattern that the pen has and how it feels in hand. The ebonite is uh, nicely finished and it's smooth as it can get in my opinion. I like the size it has, it's perfect for my hand uh, unposted. And even posted it's okay though it might be a little bit on the long side. However, I think that for loose sketching posted it's a perfect size for gripping it higher on the barrel and do loose like lines. I also like that you can use it as an eyedropper if you don't want to bother with finding a converter that fits the barrel or refilling cartridges. And lastly, I really like the flex you can get out of this knee. Keep in mind, I did modify that stock feed to get a better flow out of it and as you were able to see, it delivers and is not disappointing at all. From all the testing I have done in this uh, video, maybe I had uh, the Nib rail, Railroad twice, but it recovered right away. Things that I don't like as much on the Click Fountain Pen. There are quite a few things that I'm not 100% sure I like that much on the pen. First off, one thing that I forgot to mention, the Nib is scraping inside the barrel when capping the pen. Very lightly, but it does scrapes. Something that uh, still worries me, since I'm not 100% sure if the nib could get damaged or not over time, but at most I noticed that it can scrape the ebonite a little bit and from time to time you get some small debris on the nib that you have to clean. Second thing that I could find a little bit uh, as an annoyance, the design of the barrel is limited on what kind of converters you can use, so you will have to try a few converters until you find the right one, unless you get lucky from the first go. If the width of the converter is too large, you will not be able to screw the barrel down all the way in. And lastly, I am not a fan of the top finial and the incorporated clip in that finial that is glued on top of that barrel. No chance to recover or fix anything if something goes wrong with the clip. Overall, I think it's a fun pen to use, but I'm not sure I should recommend it, based on the price it sells at. If it's worth it or not, I will leave that decision up to you based on what you have seen. Personally, since I have it, I like it and uh, don't mind it that much. It's actually on the I like spectrum, but to be honest, I would most probably not buy another one based on what I know now. If by any means I have missed anything or you have any other questions, please leave a comment below and I will try and get to it as soon as I can. Please feel free to also leave a comment if you want to share your own experience. We all have different experiences and it will be nice to hear uh, what other things of this pen. My experience might be different than yours and that's okay. With that said, I thank you for joining me today and I hope I will catch you next time. Wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, whatever you are. Take care. Bye.